In the early 2010s, a man named Eddie Tipton won $16.5 million in the lottery. And all it would be nothing, but he turned out to be a former programmer for this company. This coincidence seemed extremely suspicious to the police, so they have started an investigation. So, what do you think? This programmer had somehow manipulated the random number generator that was used to draw winning numbers. He plugged just a two-line program code into the lottery's computer system, which was run exactly twice a year at specific time and then deleted itself. So this man, knowing how those random numbers were generated, was able to hit the jackpot. Well, yes, it took him six years, but on the other hand, it's 16 and a half million dollars. Of course, after that a huge scandal has begun, he went to jail, but this story perfectly shows the weakness of so-called pseudo-random number generators. Actually, if you think about it, we use random numbers quite often. In simulations, cryptography, passwords, and also in mentioned above lottery tickets. But what is pseudo-random generators? The word pseudo means that these numbers aren't truly random. Here is an example how one of those generators works. First, pick any starting number called a seed. It can be the current time in milliseconds or temperature outside. After that, multiply the seed by itself and take the middle out of the result. And keep repeating the process to get more numbers. Well, you just did the middle square method. Back in the days of the Manhattan Project, when scientists tried to make a simulation of uranium chain reaction, they needed a huge sequence of random numbers. They spent a long time thinking about how to do it, but then mathematician John von Neumann came up with this middle square method. So as a result, they managed to make a successful model that later helped them to create a bomb. But let's return to random. So the middle square method seemed pretty well, however, it actually has a few problems. The resulting number always depends on the original seed. Same seed, same sequence. So if someone would like to hack our generator, it would be pretty easy for them. All they have to do is just to find out the original seed. And that's it. This is why pseudo-random generators are not reliable, so they are not used in encryption or password creation. But which ones are used, you'll find out a bit later. But still, as you can see in some cases, like with the Manhattan Project, we don't care much about the quality of these random numbers. They can be pseudo-random. Often we just need to get them quickly and in large quantities. Another great example is games. You've probably seen these videos with the top 10 best seeds in Minecraft. In this case, seed is the basis for the world generation. And its generator is also pseudo-random. But what if we, for example, need to create a very secret password? Or encrypt something? Or, as an example above, generate a winning lottery ticket? How can we get the real randomness? And with that, we need physics to help us, or to be exact, the entropy. That means we need to take the chaos, and with the help of chaos, find an initial number which we will then use to generate a random sequence. It could be atmospheric noise, molecular motion, or nuclear decay. Absolutely anything that we, humans, cannot accurately predict. A great example of this is random.org. If you search in Google random generator, this website will pop up first. So, its developers claim that random.org offers true random numbers because the entropy comes from atmospheric noise, which cannot be predicted. So, generators like this are called the real random number generators. I'll leave the link to the site in the description. But the next site I'm going to talk about is number one in creativity of generating real random numbers. Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a service that protects websites and web services. It's obvious that these guys deal with a lot of encryption, and for them, using the true random numbers is crucial. So, in their office, there's a huge wall with a hundred level lamps on it. They videotape these lamps and take the picture and video and turn it into a stream of random unpredictable bytes. And this unpredictable data is what they use to create the keys that encrypt the traffic which flows through Cloudflare's network. 
Actually, these guys aren't first to do this. Leverand, how it's called, was patented by Silicon Graphics in 1996, but only lasted a couple of years. Well, you can now rest easy knowing that you are being protected by lava lamps, but it's not all about the cloud flare. In another office in London, they have this thing called a chaotic pendulum. It has three pieces and it's unpredictable in which way they twist and turn together. They also record it on camera and use it as randomness source as well. So you may say, wow, we have found the perfect way to generate truly random numbers and now we can use generators only like this, but no. Running some algorithm to generate a pseudo-random numbers is a lot easier than recording atmospheric noise or recording video of lava lamps. That's why such generators are only used where they're actually needed. To finish, let's return back to the lottery story from the very beginning. So how Eddie managed to hit the jackpot? That lottery code had its own random number generator, which generated real random numbers. But this man, because he was a programmer, was able to replace that real generator with another, pseudo-random. So he already knew the seed in it and that's how he managed to win. In general, randomness is rather a philosophical thing. Entropy, which I mentioned above, is something from nature that we, people, cannot predict. But if in hundreds of years scientists would come up with a formula that describes this entropy, then nothing will be random anymore. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. Check out the other videos on this channel and goodbye.